What's up, everyone? Today, we're going to be talking about spending a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> Let's hop into it. So one of the first things that Tesla owners will tell you you need to upgrade in your used Tesla is the MCU. I ended up taking a uh, chance and bit the bullet, spent the money, and I have to say I'm very pleased with my decision. So first and foremost, I can guarantee that you will see a huge difference in the responsiveness factor of your center screen. In fact, this applies to voice controls, screen input, load times, just everything. The MCU One is responsive, but it's just not as buttery smooth as what we've become accustomed to with the latest iPhones, Androids, and tablets. It's just not the same. In my mind, responsiveness is really the only reason you should upgrade your MCU. If you're someone who's perfectly fine with the MCU that you have currently and it's not giving you any bugs, you can probably continue course. The only true thing that the MCU 2 unlocks is the Tesla Theater. And through the Tesla Theater, you'll actually gain access to Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitch. But I will also mention that these apps are only as responsive as the cell phone connection that you have or Wi-Fi signal and the app itself. In my opinion, the Twitch app is the least responsive and can often struggle with load times for much longer than is acceptable in my honest opinion. Now, I don't personally use the Tesla theater all that often because I typically charge at home and whenever I'm on a road trip, I'm normally not stopping any longer than 20 minutes to actually sit down and even consume an episode of Netflix. You can only use these apps while you're in park, and so that can make it a challenge if you're trying to have your kid in the back seat watching Netflix while in drive, because it just simply won't happen. For me personally, when I stop at a Tesla supercharger, I either scroll on my phone or I do tap into games. And speaking of games, this is another unlock that you will have additional access to when upgrading to the MCU 2. The MCU 1 already comes with a base level of games, but the MCU 2 does enhance things a bit and unlocks things like Cuphead, Stardew Valley, Skyforge, and others. My personal favorite is Skyforge. It's very similar to Galaga, and you can just keep building and building and building on your spaceship to make it more and more advanced. It truly is a blast. And I've even been guilty of sitting in my driveway and playing it uh, just for a little while to, to get away. Now, this is one of the distinguishable differences between a brand new Tesla and a used Tesla. Outside of this, the MCU2 will give you the availability to do nearly everything that a brand new Tesla does, with the exception of Steam. The Steam library is actually capable of being downloaded on the brand new S and X Tesla models, which is pretty cool. But again, to my point of stopping at superchargers, I typically don't stop for an hour's worth of time as I only really need about 20 minutes to charge. And so in my opinion, the Steam access is nice, but completely unnecessary. One other thing that you probably will be fond of is getting access to Apple Music. The MCU 2 does come with the ability for Apple Music, and I know there's a lot of Apple Music fans out there. What I personally enjoy is pairing Apple Music along with voice controls and it really creates a very fun environment to specifically dictate to play a specific song within your Apple Music or on Spotify is just a handy little thing to have as you're driving around. Something to keep in mind is you will not have access to the radio unless you choose to pay an extra $500. Yes, you heard that right, $500 for a radio. I personally chose to make this upgrade for resale value as I anticipated it being an additional selling component whenever I do go to sell my Tesla Model S. Just keep in mind, it does not come in the price tag of the MCU2, and it is an additional $500 charge. If you're the type of person that's frustrated with the MCU in general, meaning whether it's the one or the two, you still find frustrations in controlling your AC, volume, seat heaters, etc., through the center console. In my opinion, the MCU2 upgrade really brings the voice controls next level as there's very little, if, if any, lag at all from the time of pushing the button to dictating your command to the command being carried out. So I personally use voice controls to control most of my vehicle, including folding the mirrors, changing the AC, 
and even for things like turning on the seat heaters. The price tag for the MCU-2 at the time of recording this video is $1,750 plus another $500 if you opt for the radio tuner. While this is a hefty price tag, for me personally, it was a no-brainer and completely makes my Tesla feel next level as if it were, in fact, a brand new Tesla. I hope that's been helpful for you. If so, it does such a big thing to hit the like button and subscribe if you're interested. I plan to continue making videos and I'm working really hard to grow this YouTube channel. It means so much more than you think by just simply hitting like and subscribe. So thanks for watching and I'll let you get back to it.